Well, welcome in to a new day, a new show. Again, so thankful that you have joined us here today. We've got some great conversations on the way. So let's get rolling as we first welcome our our two guests here to talk about a huge recognition and honor for a name and person that so many of our listeners, so many in the Fox Valley can can thank today. And that person, of course, critical in helping to provide an escape for us to the outdoors. This person helping in the acquisition of land for 10 natural areas in the state. And many of you know him because of the nature preserve named after him. It's about less than 10 miles from the radio station here. And of course, we're talking about Gordon Bubolts. He was recently selected as one of three inductees into the Wisconsin Conservation Hall of Fame. And we're going to talk more about his his contributions to our area today. So joining me on the phone on our Settlers Bank phone lines today first is Millie Rugland, Gordon's daughter. Millie, good morning. Thanks for being here today. Good morning, Haley. We also have on the line with us David Horst, Environmental Grants and Gifts Manager, but semi-retired, I believe, from the Community Foundation for the Fox Valley Region. Dave, good to see you. That is correct. I I say I'm retired mostly. (laughs) Retired mostly. Well, either way, Dave, so glad that you have uh, joined us and brought this story and this recognition to our attention. We'll get to that in in just a bit but first i want to understand a little bit more about gordon bubolts and for that millie i'll I'll turn to you of course who who knew him so so well your father what can you tell us about your dad's love for the outdoors and and love for the outdoors here in, in wisconsin well my dad's love for the outdoors was an all consuming passion It was really one of the driving forces of his life and one of the things that the family uh, heard about constantly (laughs) as he went about his work preserving land and protecting our waters. And uh, this is the only way to say it is he was was totally passionate about that. Yes, passionate uh, is absolutely a great way to describe it. What do you remember from from growing up uh, in that world and, and having those conversations, you know, part of, of, of growing up and in your home at times, too? Well, um, what I remember most is the excitement he would bring home every time he was outdoors looking at land to save and uh, waters to preserve. And he would come in with wonderful statements like, Millie, do you know that wetlands are nature sponges and would tell me all about all the wonders of wetlands and how they protect our waters or uh, talk about seeing uh, an eagle someplace, which were very rare then when I was a child. Interesting, interesting. You know, uh, and, and did those conversations, did that passion that your dad have, did that, you know, rub off on you at all? Yeah, it really did. Yes, I have spent uh, my my major um, non professional work, my volunteer work, has been with conservation my entire life. So I'm still involved. I'm working. I work with the Northeast Wisconsin Land Trust here. And when we lived in Connecticut, I worked with the land trust there, preserving land. And uh, yeah, so the passion definitely rubbed off. Yeah, it seems so. It seems so. But it's it seems Millie too that that your dad was he was great in not only his passions, but I think also uh, helping others to understand why we needed to be preserving and keeping these places for future generations. Can you talk with us a bit about the process he had and how he motivated others to join him in that? Well, when I look at his accomplishments, I think, uh, you know, besides his passion, which is contagious, Mm. Compassion is always contagious. It it's creates an excitement for the, the subject somebody's passionate about. But in spite of, in, in addition to that, he listened to people. He listened to people who said, you know, we should really preserve this wonderful place or we should really protect the waters by this kind of regulation. And then he would create a vision. He was a lawyer and a businessman, and he had lots of strategic um, background from those positions and he would create a vision and then he create a strategy on how we could accomplish those goals. And uh, in addition, he would speak whenever he had the chance. He never turned down a ch- he never turned down a chance to speak to people about conservation, no matter how small the group. 
That's fantastic. Well, it was those efforts that led to 10 natural areas here in the state. And Dave, I'll bring you in on this one because I know you're very well versed in those different areas. Talk with us a bit about what areas those are and how Gordon had a hand in each of them. All right. Um, Gordon uh, was involved in the acquisition for the use by the public of natural areas from Fond du Lac County to Shawano County and all the way out to Manitowoc. Um, They included four nature centers, three wildlife areas, two county parks, and High Cliff State Park. It was very integral in in that acquisition. Um, The four nature centers are boo bolts, of course. There's a story about that that we can get to later. Uh, Mosquito Hill Nature Center in New London. Um, The uh, Woodland Dunes Nature Center in Manitowoc. And Fallen Timbers, which is largely a a teaching nature center near Seymour. Uh, the wildlife areas are the Muckwa Marsh out in New London, um, Wacaw Creek near Amro, and then the county park are Mount Morris and Heyman Falls. Heyman Falls is uh, up near Pella, and Mount Morris is in Mount Morris. Wow. Wow. That's quite the list, Dave. <laughs> And did, do we know of any, any themes among these? Were, were these, you know, relatively complicated processes to receive those recognitions? Or was it kind of, you know, chipping away a little bit at the time? Well, there, there are interesting examples of him using his, build, his business skills to get things, things done. Like um, at uh, Hayman Falls, uh, the, county, the local county board was concerned about uh, have the the liability of having people going through waterfalls. They're actually class three. And um, so he went back to Wisconsin Electric, which was donating the the land, and negotiated an extra cash payment to cover the liability insurance. And, you know, just by making a little deal like that, the county board was satisfied and the deal went through. And we can sit and watch a very cool waterfall. Wow. I think in today's day and age, we would be, you know, impressed at maybe one or two areas being, you know, dedicated as, as a conservation place. But the fact that Gordon was part of, of 10 of these, what does that say about his work, you know, not only in the community, but, you know, politically as well? What does that say about his work and his passion? Oh, and from what Millie tells me, that was just a good start. Mm. He, he wanted to have a nature center in every every one of the 72 counties in Wisconsin. Um, what it said to me was was that this is a man that should be on the list of people in the Conservation Hall of Fame. Indeed. And and that is where we'll take our conversation next. In addition to hearing that story about Bubolt's Nature Preserve, I, I will hold it to that, Dave. We'll, we'll, take it, right. we'll take it there after the break, and then we'll talk more about the Wisconsin Conservation Hall of Fame, the honor for Gordon Bubolt's, and what you need to know in regards to that. Stick with us. This is Focus Fox Valley on WHBY. Welcome back to Focus Fox Valley. We are learning more about the life, the legacy, the conservation efforts of Gordon Buboltz and the honor to come from the Wisconsin Conservation Hall of Fame. Joining me today, Dave Horst, who is with the Community Foundation for the Fox Valley region, semi-retired as well, and uh, Millie Rugland, also Gordon's daughter. We are so lucky to have both of you joining us here today. And I, I do want to hear the story about Bubolt's Nature Preserve and, and the, I think it's the naming of that is the story, Dave, you were uh, hinting towards? Yeah, that's correct. Um, Gordon worked through an organization, uh, a nonprofit, uh, called uh, the, uh, it was the, um, it's called, they called it uh, NAPI, Natural Areas Preservation Incorporated. And the, the board of that organization wanted to name what is now Bubolt's Nature Center after him, uh, but they knew that he wouldn't accept the title. He was chairman of that organization at the time. So they arranged to take a vote to uh, dismiss him as chairman, make him leave the room. They voted to name it after him and then put him back in and made him chairman again. <laughs> Wow, that is quite a story. Yeah. Millie, when you hear that, uh, what comes to mind for you? Well, that's that's typical. Um, and the thing is, 
but, you know, as a volunteer, it's sort of like one man can make a different story. He created the, the Natural Areas Preservation, Inc., and he garnered support, people to support them and go after these places to preserve and actually preserve them. And it wasn't all about him or wanting any tribute for it. It was just getting the job done, and he was, he was good at that. He was persistent. And he ran into obstacles like um, that story Dave told about needing insurance because people didn't want to have have the public open to Hayman Falls. They might get hurt. Mm. Um, it, it's, 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 it's just, it makes me very proud. Mm. Well, it's that ripple effect, you know. Uh, one person can make ripples and it turns into waves and... Here we are with 10, again, 10 natural areas in the state, uh, all because of, of, of the efforts of, of one that, again, led to that ripple effect. So, exactly. Dave, I, I do want to ask you then, you know, we're, we're kind of hearing the, the resume here of Gordon, and it's easy for, for me to understand why you wanted to nominate him. But what other things came to mind for you in the reasons behind wanting to nominate Gordon for the Wisconsin Conservation Hall of Fame because I'm a little surprised that he hadn't been nominated, you know, sooner. To be honest, I was. I was also. Um, my wife and I were, were taking a hike at the Schmeekley Reserve in Stevens Point, which is where the Hall of Fame is located. And we stopped in and looked at the display. And I went to the. I had just written a, a story for Natural Resources Magazine about the, the ten, the Blue Bolt Ten, I call. Hmm. Um, and so I went right to the bees to look for his name. And looked and looked and it wasn't there. I couldn't believe it. So um, I, that started the nomination process, and I bugged a lot of people along the way, and um, we have finally succeeded. Wow. And for people who might not be familiar with the Wisconsin Conservation Hall of Fame, what do you know about it, Dave? And do we would we recognize any any of of its of its honorees um, amongst amongst Gordon's name? Yes, I mean he's going to be with some tremendous names. Uh, um, Wisconsin has a great history of, of leaders in the environmental field. Uh, Aldo Leopold is, is in the Hall of Fame. John Muir, Sigurd Olson, Gaylord Nelson, the founder of Earth Day. Uh, Warren Knowles, former governor. In fact, uh, Nelson and Knowles were both friends of Gail of uh, Gordon's. Um, Owen Grammy, the artist. Um, Jens Jensen, the architect, and I think the coolest first name in all of conservation, Increase Lapham. His first name was Increase. He, mm. he did a lot of mapping early in Wisconsin. Wow. Um, and then there are more recent people like George Archibald, and the co-founder of the International Crane Foundation, and George Meyer and C.D. Basadney, former uh, DNR secretaries. Uh, so he's in good company. There's even a few nature writers that snuck in there. Uh, Leroy Lintier, uh, Roy Lucas, and Jay Reed, who was an outdoor writer at the Journal for a long time. Wow. So if, you, if you want to see all the people with various talents that were involved in shaping the natural history of Wisconsin, it's all there in the Hall of Fame. Wow. Or it's almost all there since Gordon Stead. I'm sure it's an easy internet search for for so many to to start looking at those names and and remembering those accomplishments. Definitely in good company. So so Millie, what does the honor mean mean to you? What does it mean to the Bubolts family? Have you talked about it? Uh, yes, we have. We're all very excited about it. It is it is to me the hallmark of of honors. Uh, Dad has received a lot of honors over the years, but the Conservation Hall of Fame is. One of the chief. Another one he's received as Conservationist of the Year um, from the National Wildlife Federation that Gaylord um, Nelson nominated him to, and I was I was pleased to be part of the dinner where that was presented. And um, anyway, he has received other nom- nominees, but the reason I'm most excited about this one is they have all their research and information about their their awardees online and it provides and their mission is to spread the word for conservation and they do that by having that available so I hope people would take advantage and look at that. Mm. It's a, it's a great starting point and uh, a reminder for us to maybe take a page from from Gordon's playbook uh, from Mr. Bubolts's playbook and and apply it perhaps to to our current world. 
When will uh, Gordon Buboltz be honored, Dave? When can we expect to to see his name amongst those others uh, in the Conservation Hall of Fame? Well, the induction ceremony is in April, but it's uh, it's going to be entirely online because because of COVID. There are three people being uh, inducted. Another one, people in the Fox Cities would probably remember is Kathleen Falk, yes, who was the state public intervener. And uh, you might remember the famous scene of her leading a, a canoe down Mud Creek when uh, the Fox River Mall was looking to get a permit. Um, so she's known to a lot of people here, too. Um, so th- they're, they're doing three different ceremonies um, on April 19th, um, 2, 4, and 6 o'clock. And we don't know which one. Uh, which uh, one those, 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 those presentations will be at 2, 4, and 6 o'clock, but they, they will also remain online if people can't make it at those hours on the 19th of April. Fantastic. Well, again, uh, so thrilled to learn this news. Dave, we appreciate you taking the time to nominate uh, Gordon Buboltz, of course. And, and Millie, can't thank you enough for your insight and, and memories and, and things shared today about your dad. And, you know, I think for so many of us, Buboltz Nature Preserve, specifically for, for myself and just my little family, you know, that's a place that we treasure visiting and we've taken family pictures there. That's where my wedding photos were taken. And it wouldn't have been possible without the efforts of of your dad. So just from, you know, one small families and again, comes back to that ripple effect. All of us able to enjoy these beautiful places because of the efforts of, of one man and the inspiration there as well. So we're appreciative. This is a well-deserved honor. And again, my thanks to both of you for being here today to tell us more about it. Millie, thank you so much. Thanks for having us. Dave Horst, as well to you, thank you very much for being here. Thanks for the opportunity to tell people about this. Absolutely. And we will share more details on our website, WHBY. Dot com, in addition to a link to the Wisconsin Conservation Hall of Fame for you to take a look at others who have been honored with this. And again, our congratulations uh, to the Buboltz family uh, for this amazing honor as well. 